Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Serpents. Today we are going to be looking into a character who I would fell deeply in love with for a while and still love dearly to this day, Oda Nobunaga. Or as I will call them throughout this video, Nobu. There's a lot to love about Faith's take on Nobu. She's goofy, cute, and has a winning smile, and is drawn by one of the best FGO artists, Paco. Couple this with her being the main character of my favorite recurring FGO events, the Gouda Gouda events, and I'm hard pressed to find anything that I dislike about her. Alright, her kit sucks and is outdated. Anyway, let's look into the life and times of Japan's great unifier. Side note, I will be referring to Nobu as a he, as this is an obvious case of a gender bend. However, there's a chance that I may accidentally slip up and say she and miss it in the editing process, so if that happens, feel free to make fun of me in the comments. Oda Nobunaga was destined for greatness. Sometimes the universe lines itself in such a way that a conqueror is able to arise, and Nobu happened to be one such person. Nobu was born on the 23rd of June in 1534, in Nagoya, to the prestigious Oda clan. He was the second son of Oda Nobuhide and Dota Gozen, and as a child he was referred to as Kiposhi, which is adorable. Also, after breaking down the kanji of this name, the kanji mean luck, law, and master. So, this childhood nickname translates to the master of luck and law, which is painfully accurate to who he would grow up to be. Of course, if this is inaccurate and you are a native Japanese speaker, please let me know. Nobu was described as an unusual child. No sources say why he was such a bizarre child, they just always say this word for word. He was well known for his bizarre behavior and received the name Owari no Otsuke, or the Fool of Owari. But they never say what he did. What they may be referring to is how he carried himself and interacted with others. Nobu was one of those proud kids, the kind that speaks clearly and thinks through what he has to say. On the other hand, he was known to play with all the children of the town, paying no mind to his social standing. After matchlock guns were introduced into Japan, Nobu became infatuated with them. This, of course, is seen in game as he is an archer initially. This combination may be the quote bizarre behavior unquote that is often described. But this combination of pride, workability with all classes, and fascination with new age weaponry is what gave Nobu the potential for greatness. It can be said that Nobu's childhood was ended when he was married off to another warlord, Saito Dozen's daughter, Nohime, at the age of 15. All was well for a few years until Nobu's father, Nobuhide, passed away. Then came the trouble of succession. Nobu was the second son of the Oda clan, and the first legitimate son as his older brother, Nobuhiro, was considered illegitimate. Thus, Nobu was set to become the leader of the Oda clan. As FGO players know, this was a bit more rocky than it should have been because of one of Nobu's younger brothers, who challenged his legitimacy. This was Oda Nobuyuki. Now in Fate, Nobuyuki is replaced by Nobukatsu, which initially threw me through a loop because Nobukatsu is also the name of Nobunaga's second son. Turns out, Nobuyuki was also known as Nobukatsu, but the only allusion to this in Fate is that his nickname is Katsu. For those of you who are familiar with Guda Guda Nobu, you know that Nobu likes to give slightly mean nicknames to her subordinates, like Toyotomi Hideyoshi being called Monkey, so calling her brother Katsu, like the pork dish, is more par for the course than anything. Anyway, that's just some fun historical discrepancy that I found that made my life hell for about two hours. Regardless, Nobuyuki wanted to become the head of the Oda clan and led a revolt of like-minded individuals against Nobu and his supporters. Nobu, however, was able to suppress this rebellion and eventually defeated Nobuyuki in 1557, where he himself killed his brother. Nobu's older brother, Nobuhiro, would also attempt to overthrow Nobu. However, this attempt was ill-fated as well. Though, Nobu did spare his life. Now solidified as the head of the Oda clan, Nobu was able to use his military resources. In 1558, he sent an army to protect a man named Suzuki Shigeteru, who was a newly formed ally and one on the run from Imagawa Yoshimoto, a powerful daimyo of the Tokaido region. The following year, Nobu would gain complete control of the Owari territory after destroying a rebel fortress in Iwakura. Thus, Nobu's true reign began. Imagawa Yoshimoto would prove to be a worthy adversary for Nobu. Yoshimoto and Nobu's father, Nobuhide, were at constant odds with each other. Yoshimoto wanted to expand his territory into Owari, and with the death of his longtime adversary, he decided to launch an invasion. In 1560, Yoshimoto took an army of 25,000 and headed towards Kyoto. They attempted to cover the reasoning for their march by claiming that they were headed to aid another daimyo of the Ashikaga shogunate. Then, a separate clan, the Matsudairas, joined them on their march and then began to lay siege to the territory. The combination of Yoshimoto and Matsudaira's forces easily led to the capture of several fortresses and castles, and prompted Nobu to react. 
However, Nobu was severely outnumbered, having only approximately 3,000 soldiers at his disposal. Of course, Nobu was completely undeterred in order to counterattack. Nobu was notorious for having a policy of superior strength over superior numbers, essentially meaning that if you were stronger and smarter than the enemy, then you could beat them regardless of how many there were. Using this tactic, Nobu marched his army to a heavily fortified fortress where Yoshimoto was staying. He waited for a thunderstorm to appear and launched his attack after a particularly massive crack of thunder. This timing hit the sounds of gunshots and allowed for he and his troops to invade the castle almost completely unnoticed at first. Yoshimoto would be killed by the Oda during this attack. This clear victory through superior tactics resounded throughout Japan and many warlords pledged loyalty to the Oda clan. This was the beginning of the Great Unification. So we briefly mentioned the Matsudaira clan already. They were a subordinate clan to the Imagawa, but now that Yoshimoto was dead, the Imagawa's influence waned, and the Matsudaira broke off. They would forge an alliance with the Oda soon after. For those who know Japanese history, you know that Matsudaira would eventually become known as the Tokugawa. And who would be the leader of this group other than good old Tokugawa Ieyasu? Though at this time, he was known as Matsudaira Motoyasu. With this, the Oda gained a powerful ally. Nobu's next course of action would be to dispose of the Saito clan. The Saitos had just lost their leader, a man named Saito Yoshitatsu, and was now being governed by his son, Saito Tatsuoki, who was considered to be a weak and incompetent leader. Nobu took this opportunity to invade the Saito territory in what would become known as the Mino Campaign. This campaign would be a great success, resulting in the complete takeover of the Saito clan. The final battle was incredibly devastating for the Saitos, as three legendary samurai who were initially on the Saito's side were convinced to join the Oda, and together they took complete control of Inabayama Castle and its surrounding towns. Nobu then changed the name of the castle and area to Gifu, which is what it's still called today. It was after this monumental success that Nobu would announce that he had decided he wanted to conquer all of Japan. He then created a new seal that reads Tenka Fubu, which loosely translates to rule the empire by force which is fitting for Nobu. Nobu wanted to solidify good relations with the Azai clan, a rival faction, so he offered his sister Oichi's hand in marriage to the leader of the Azai, Azai Nagamasa. For the record, Oichi is Chacha's mom. In his next attempt towards conquest, he wanted to take control of Kyoto and its surrounding regions, as it was perfect for a strategic countrywide takeover being slapped in the middle of the main island. This attempt was also prompted by the request of another warlord, Ashikaga Yoshiaki, who was the brother of a murdered shogun of the region. Nobu agreed to retake the area and install Yoshiaki as the shogun, and thus gain a powerful ally in strategic area. Nobu and his forces marched to Kyoto, annihilating any who stood in their way and recruiting those who would support their cause. In November of 1568, Nobu successfully drove out Yoshiaki's rival and installed him as the daimyo of Kyoto. Nobu would refuse the awards that Yoshiaki would try and bestow upon him, which would end up stretching the relations. After this success, Nobu invited all the local daimyos and shoguns of the region to a grand banquet. While most attended, the Asakura clan head, Asakura Yoshikage, refused. Which Nobu took as an insult to himself, the emperor, and the newly placed shogun. Thus, Nobu marched onto the Asakura territory. This caused a break in the treaty that the Oda had with the Azai, as the Azai and Sakura had been allies for much longer. Other clans latched onto this break and an anti-Nobu regime was formed. Nobu, with the assistance of the now Tokugawa, took on the Azai Asakura forces in what would be called the Battle of Onagawa. This battle would be a devastating victory for the Oda Tokugawa alliance, and would lead to the sieges of Odani Castle and Ichijo Dani Castle, both of which result in the leaders of the Azai and Asakura clans committing seppuku and ending their clans in 1573. The next threat that Nobu faced was the Iko Ikai, which was a resistance cult that formed out of the Jodo Shinshu sect of Buddhism. They were staunchly anti-samurai due to the immense amount of warfare that coincided with the Sengoku era. This group stood against Nobu's takeover of Japan and thus had to be dealt with. So, Nobu split his forces and had one part deal with the Iko Ikai and the other continue to fight against rogue clans that stood in his way. The first of these conflicts would occur in 1571, with what would become known as the Siege of Nagashima. The preemptive conflict to this involved Nobu marching on Mount Hiei, where he and his army razed the entire area, killing monks, civilians, and all others who just happened to be there. This complete and utter brutalization is what would give Nobu the nickname the Demon King. Nobu's first attempt at taking Nagashima fell short, but after being emboldened by the destruction of Mount Hiei, he marched once again. He attacked in a rainstorm where his troops' matchlock guns were unable to fire properly while his enemies still could as they were under cover. This was a complete and utter defeat that almost led to Nobu's own death. His third attempt at taking Nagashima was in 1574 and was initially done on the water. 
Nobu's forces were able to surround the area, and they were able to massacre the tens of thousands of Iko Ikai, dealing a heavy blow to the resistance force. While all of this was going on, Nobu had a second force attacking the Iko Ikai's main stronghold. This was a much more slow burn of a conflict and lasted until 1580, due in large part to the Mori clan's intervention and support for the Iko Ikai. However, supplies would eventually run out, and the fortress in what is now Osaka would surrender. Nobu would spare the lives of the members, instead banishing them and then burning the fortress to the ground. Another eventual dissension would occur involving the Takeda clan, led by a man by the name of Takeda Shingen. The Takeda clan employed one of the 24 great generals, Akiyama Nobutomu, to take an Oda-controlled fortress where Nobu's aunt, Lady Otsuya, resided. She would work with Nobutomo in surrounding the fort and married him. This transgression could not go unanswered, thus Nobunaga took to the fight. I say that, but the fighting mostly rested on the Tokugawa side. The Tokugawa were managing the area around Kyoto, and that is where Takeda Shingen wanted. The Tokugawa initially suffered defeat, but were able to adapt to their strategy to night raids that were successful in repelling the invaders. The Takeda's attempt at taking control ended with the death of Shingen in 1573. Turning towards Kyoto once again, Nobu had to address a growing concern. Ashikaga Yoshiaki, the very shogun Nobu had put in place. He had threatened the Oda on multiple occasions, even being a linchpin in the attempted Takeda invasion. Thus, Nobu returned to Kyoto and effectively ended the Ashikaga Shogunate forever. The son of Takeda Shingen, a man named Takeda Katsuyori, would attempt to rise against Nobu as well, but this attempt was met with failure and Nobu, along with the Tokugawa, destroyed the Takeda clan entirely. By the year 1580, Nobu would all but achieve his wish, being the most powerful man in all of Japan, even more so than the Emperor. I say this because without the Oda's support, the Emperor's power may have fallen by the wayside. That is until Honoji happened. If you recognize the name Honoji, it is because it was the name of the event in which Nobu first appeared in FGO, as well as Gudu Gu to final Honoji, which is the event that both Kagetora and Mori Nagayoshi appeared. I'm going to sidetrack for a second to explain something I found interesting involving Mori Nagayoshi. We have mentioned that the Mori clan assisted the Iko Ikai. Mori Nagayoshi was not a member of this Mori clan. See, Mori and Mori are two completely different clans. The Mori clan uses these kanji and this crest. The Mori clan uses this kanji and this crest. Which is visible on Mori Nagayoshi's outfit, thus confirming that there is a differentiation. Mori Nagayoshi, as well as his brother, Mori Ranmaru, were loyal to the Oda, and would be involved directly in the Honoji incident, so let's get back to that. The year was 1582. Nobu was the uncontested ruler of Japan, and now his aspirations were to go and conquer what was left. He launched an invasion to take over a Mori-controlled territory called Takamatsu Castle, led by Toyotomi Hideyoshi, or, as Nobu calls him in-game, Monkey. The siege initially went well, with Hideyoshi diverting a river's flow to flood the castle. But the Mori clan dispatched additional troops to the area, which prompted Hideyoshi to request backup from Nobu. Not only did Nobu oblige, he sent many of his best generals to assist in the takeover, and he himself would meet the opposing forces later. One of these was a man named Akechi Mitsuhide, who was stationed in the Chugoku region at the time. Nobu set out for one of his favorite temples in Kyoto, Honoji Temple, where he planned to have a tea ceremony before his invasion. He departed, bringing only 30 pages with him to attend the ceremony, and his son, Nobutada, brought only 2,000 cavalrymen. At the summons of their leader, all the generals marched towards Kyoto, but upon reaching the Katsura River, Mitsuhide announced that the enemy was in Honoji. Thus, he led his army to the temple where Nobu was staying. He surrounded the place and had his troops overwhelm Nobu's. While Nobu and his forces attempted to resist, this effort was fruitless and Nobu retreated into the inner sanctum of Honoji Temple. His last words were supposedly, Ran, don't let them come in. Ran being Mori Ranmaro, who we discussed earlier. Nobu committed seppuku in the inner sanctum while his loyal retainers set the temple ablaze. Nobu's corpse was never recovered, and thus his conquest of Japan ended. To this day, it is unknown as to why Akechi Mitsuhide decided to betray Nobu. One theory is that he was so loyal to the Ashikaga Shogunate that Nobu destroyed as he was once a bodyguard to the Shogun. Another is that he was convinced to do so by the Mori clan. Yet another is that he believed that killing Nobu would make him the de facto leader of Japan, which he did declare at one point. The unfortunate reality is that we will never know why. Mitsuhide took responsibility for the death of Nobu despite the fact that it was not him who killed the Demon King. Upon learning of Mitsuhide's betrayal, Hideyoshi abandoned his attack on the Mori and would actually manage to form a temporary truce with them so he could pursue his leader's murderer. Hideyoshi tracked down the dissenting army and utterly defeated them, having Mitsuhide abandon the fight. He would be killed not by the Oda, 
not by the Toyotomi, not by the Tokugawa, but by bandits while fleeing the battlefield. Hideyoshi would continue Nobu's ambition of taking over all of Japan, effectively unifying the country and setting the stage for what would eventually become the Tokugawa Shogunate, led by another of Nobu's former retainers, Tokugawa Ieyasu. But that's a story for another time. Nobunaga and his retainers are quite likely the most influential members of Japanese history. Nobu's ambitions led to the end of an era and gave birth to a new governing body. There is a saying regarding this complete change of the Japanese world that goes like this. Nobu pounds the rice, Hideyoshi kneads the dough, and Ieyasu eats the cake. The rice, of course, being in reference to Japan. Nobu pounded it into submission, Hideyoshi expanded upon this and grew the territory, and Ieyasu took control in the end. Nobu's story is one of ambition, a drive to achieve one's goals and using all that is at your disposal to get there. Remember, Nobu was the weird kid. He was such a strange and eccentric person that he was dubbed a fool in his youth. The great fool of Owari became the great fool of all of Japan. Being self-driven and having a goal to reach is all it took to elevate someone who could have been just another noble to one of the most famous Japanese figures in history. Remember that. But that's it! Oda Nobunaga in the books. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something along the way. I've got a personal challenge for those of you who are still here. So we just hit the 500 sub threshold and I nearly had a panic attack. But with the current growth rate of this channel, it's possible to hit 1,000 subs by the end of the year. If we can reach 1,000 subs before January 1st of 2022, I will figure out some kind of giveaway probably for Apple gift cards so y'all can roll on the Yang Guifei banner or save it for whatever you like. I've never done anything like this before, so it's going to be a bit scuffed. Just please try and understand that. I'll be updating that stuff on Twitter, at Sventarian. But for 500 subs, thank you guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you. Speaking of shameless plugging, check out my Twitch at Klidge Radio for much less structured content. Let me know what you thought of the video in the comments. Let me know which servants you want to see so I can add them to my doc. Like the videos, it really does help. Share this with your friends and teachers. But until next time, keep your chin up. Peace.